mama told me when I was young. Come sit beside me, yeah, my only son. Well, listen closely. Hey y'all, welcome to the next episode of Leonard Skinner Shorts. Joe is holding a sweatshirt. Joe, turn the sweatshirt around. Down just a little bit. There you go. Sounds of the South Records. And if you look real closely, turn around to the other side where it shows the tag. The little tag on the front. Push that to the front. That's right. If you can see this tag... It says XL, and there's some information on there that, I don't know if you can see it or not, but anyway, this is a sweatshirt from Al Cooper's label, Sounds of the South. Let's, let's sit down. So, here's my story. I was a little kid. How old must I have been? 12? Something like that? Anyway, uh, my best friend, his father was a news director at a television station here in Memphis. And they, as, you know, somebody big at the station, he would get opportunities. And so the radio, the station also had a radio station. I think it was FM 100 at the time. And they, were, they had these concerts. So they would give tickets to the people at the station to do whatever, you know, promotional stuff. Well, there was a band coming in. They, he got a couple tickets and said, hey... You and your friend want to come. So we went to Ardent Studios in Midtown Memphis to hear a band we'd never heard. Knew nothing about it. We were standing there. There wasn't many people there. It was a very small, cramped area. Have you ever, have you ever been to Ardent? No. It's pretty cool. I've been there a couple times since. But I'm some stupid kid. And some long-haired guy comes by, walks by me, and throws me this sweatshirt. Just throws it at me. Now, it says extra large. And I'm more than extra large now. It couldn't come near fitting it. But it's never been washed. It's never been worn. And it was given to me by, as it turns out, Ronnie Van Zandt. October the 30th, 1973. I had no idea. In fact, you can, well, you, you were just, you were younger I than me. I was very young. But that time, I think, I was into uh, Three Dog Night, right? <laughs> And, and i just gotten into Elton John, which was a good decision on my part. And I think, well, my first record that I bought was Led Zeppelin III. So, you know, all over the board with that. <laughs> but anyway, um, I had no idea what we were witnessing, you know. And over the years, I've never worn it, never worn this sweatshirt, and usually have had it hung on the wall, wherever I've lived. Including when, for a long time, you were growing up. Yeah, I remember. Um, it's it's like a treasure, and in my opinion, it should be in some kind of um, you know rock and roll hall of fame or something, or or hard rock cafe, right? Possibly because it's it's original, and and at one time I was thinking about the Freebird Cafe, and you were at the Freebird Cafe. I have been there. Was that I was there once? We're still open. And, and it was cool. Well, everything's hanging up on the wall. All your gold records, you know, everything. Pictures of Ronnie was very cool. Yeah, and so I, you you took pictures of it and sent them to me, and I didn't, I didn't get to go. But but I thought, idiot me, oh, it'll be open forever. You know? I Something like that, I just thought it would be such a popular thing and would keep going. But was it, I mean... I think it was popular. They had shows, live shows, probably on the weekends. Uh, different bands come in there. It was, a, it was a big bar scene with, with live music. Oh, I didn't know. I thought it was just a cafe. So you oh, could eat was, there. It was a lot more than just a and cafe. And have music. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's very cool. Anyway, I thought that this shirt would be there someday, something like that. And I've never seen it anywhere else. Um, in fact, I had the opportunity. I was trying to authenticate it, just not for my sanity, because I know where it came from. But uh, I had a chance to talk with Al Cooper in 2009. I had the, the balls, I guess, to contact Al Cooper and ask him if he was interested in producing my daughter's first CD. And he was at that time, uh, 
a guest professor at Harvard or somewhere. And his email address was like alcooperatharvard.edu or something. But we had an ongoing conversation. And in those emails, he just said, you know, at this time, I'm only concentrating on working with Supergroup, which was the band that he had. And uh, if you look, if you want to read the best biography on rock and roll, Al Cooper. It is an amazing trip through the history of rock and roll from the early 60s. This guy did things you have no idea. He founded Blood, Sweat, and Tears. He was the guy who came up with the idea of putting horns onto a rock and roll record. I mean, groundbreaking guy. Of course, he discovered Leonard Skinner. What's the name of his podcast? They got a podcast going that's, that's you know, recent, very new. Al know. Cooper does? Yes. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, it's a podcast going on. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, but my God. It's something about Al Cooper. Well, if it's Al Cooper, you got you got to jump on because it's just... I mean, he was, if something big was going on in music, he was there from the, the time that when Dylan was recording like a Rolling Stone. I mean, he snuck into that session and played on the record. It was just, the, the story's great. Um, but anyway, in my conversation with Al, I sent him a picture of the shirt. And I said, listen, do you remember this shirt? And he came back and said that basically they are promotional items and they would give them to radio stations as giveaways and stuff like that. So the bands that he had, now there weren't very, at that time, he'd give them 10 or 20 for the road. And they would give one radio station, so that's when you call in, be the fifth caller and get a sweat, you know, that kind of deal. So that's what he said. So it was authenticated. And now I don't know what to do with it. I mean, Hard Rock Cafe's not calling me. The Freebird Cafe's gone. Yeah. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is where it belongs. So if you know anybody at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, for a small fee, hopefully, <laughs> they could have a part of rock and roll history that I think may well be one of a kind. A Sounds of the South, Support Southern Music sweatshirt that Ronnie Van Zant actually touched. That's as close as I ever came. Right. Pretty close. What is, which is pretty cool. And I remember that day, my only thought was, um, it was loud. Because <laughs> I'd never been to a live concert like that before. I think my first concert was Head East, my first big concert. Because Head East was a regional band throughout the middle America. You may or may not have heard of them, but I thought they were pretty cool at the time. But anyway, so that's the Ronnie Van Zant story. That's a sweatshirt story. I would love to hear comments if anybody else has one or is, we'd love to know. Yeah, recognizes it or has a similar story. We'd where, like your input for sure. Yeah, so we'll keep that forever. Anyway, I'm not sure I would hand it off to anybody. To any kind. Of rock and Roll Hall of Fame, probably not. You're not a big fan of them. I'm not a fan of them, and I don't know why. It's all We're getting way off topic. But, so ba clear. but basically, he's fixing to tell you why we don't like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Cool. First of all, first of all, it took them forever to put Leonard Skinner in, and they went in with Blondie, which bothered me a little bit. Not that nothing against Blondie, okay? But, you know, kind of a one or two hit wonder. It's just this year... The top two vote getters don't even come close to getting in. Warren Zevon? Oh my goodness, you don't put Warren Zevon in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this many years later. Oh my gosh. For three months every morning, Joe would call me and say, Log on and vote for Warren Zevon. <laughs> we did, we pounded it. And and you're right. Who was the second vote getter? Oh, he was the second vote getter. I can't remember who the first one was, but pretty strong band that didn't make it either. And they have started, I think. I think a, a one-hit wonder rapper lady got in. And it's just, the things they do make no sense to me. They kept Kiss out for years because they didn't like Gene Simmons or there was a political difference between Gene and, and them, which I understand. But they're Kiss, just, I just don't think they're truly rock and roll Hall of Fame. You think it's about the money? Well, everything's about the money. That's a little disappointing. Anyway, so now you know we love Warren Zevon. I love um, Warren Zevon. I saw him a couple times. Oh my gosh, he was he was fantastic. I mean, what a freak! Um, you talk geniuses. He was a genius. But read his wife's biography of him, and you'll have a whole different story about yeah. Warren Zevon. All I know is him and Letterman were really good buddies, yeah. and I'll take Letterman with anybody to the bank. If you want to read about a real, true sexual addiction, <laughs> this is Warren Zevon. He was a freak. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, Excitable boy. <laughs> it says more than you want. Anyway, <laughs> well, thanks for listening to our story. It was kind of personal, and we'll jump back on something. Um, 
and we'll see you soon here on Skinner Shorts. Thank you very much. See you next time.